side and that side of the tree. It's a pin oak, roughly like 55, 60 feet tall. Let's say 35 feet in canopy radius. And we're just gonna walk through the steps on how you um, how you set up a sonic tomography unit. And uh, I have the, this is the Rintec Arbor Tom. And so first what we're gonna do is place the sensors. They've gotta be not, you don't want them here in the root wood. Uh, you want them above this this uh, base. The fibers of the wood are a little bit straighter up here and, it's, and they're not straight down there. Plus, when you come in here and you get these included bark areas, it's gonna ring back um, as decayed wood because the sound waves are not gonna go through the included, the bark areas. So we wanna go up here where there's, there's not, uh, not sections of included bark. But we got some mushrooms on the back. Uh, those are oyster mushrooms, but we'll figure it out. And I'll check back in once we get stuff a little bit more set up. So we're getting into the point we're putting sensors on. So what I've done is I've, uh, we've got this big cavity and I want to get the, so we're getting to the point where we're putting sensors on. The sensors have gone up uh, out of where the root wood is. You don't want to put the sensors down lower into here because if you've got areas of included bark, like right there where my foot is, that uh, those sensors, if you put one here and there, it, it you know, if you have a sensor here and one there and it goes through this area of included bark, the bark won't move the sound wave through well enough so it'll, it'll make this whole area from there and there look decayed when actually it's just included bark. So you always want to pick these sensors up out of where the included bark areas are. We've also put some of the sensors back in here so we can kind of get, you know, how thick this wood is. And we also are going to try and compensate for some of this reaction with the ram's horns that are likely curling in this way. We'll also have put the sensors mostly on the outside of little areas up in here where there's bark. So you've kind of isolated this area if it, uh, if it rings back slow when we're doing the, when, when we're uh, uh, shooting the sound waves through the tree. And so it's gone all the way around. It's gone all the way around and the the first sensor is on the northmost part of the tree, so that just makes the image on the computer look cleaner. So now we've edited the image out, pushed uh, some of the sides uh, in this image so it kind of more matches what the tree looks like. We do everything on about five centimeter increments, and when you're pushing it in and out, um, doing it at five centimeter increments because we're not trying to be precise. Like this is not like a scientific piece of equipment. It's not gonna tell you precisely how safe the tree is, but what we're doing is it's, it's, working, on, it's working on the idea of, of uh, is this tree a relatively safe tree? Uh, or is this tree safer or less safe than a relatively safe tree? So a relatively safe tree, we all, because trees are so complex, right? The, the wood in a tree is so complex. There's so many factors that you're not gonna be able to precisely determine from how much wind is hitting the tree to how strong this base of the tree is. It's just impossible to precisely figure it out. So what we have to do is we have to think of tree safety in, in relative terms. And so you'd look over here and you would think that this is a relatively safe tree. It doesn't have any defects. You know, the canopy of it looks good. And this tree has this defect here. So what we're trying to answer by doing this testing is, is this tree with the defect uh, less safe or more safe than this tree? We're not trying to precisely figure out, you know, we're not, we're not trying to figure out if, if you know, the, the precise load carrying capacity of this tree is, is greater than the expected load and, and, you know, trying to factor in a 1.5 times building safety factor in, into a tree. It, it's just doing that is, is not going to work out. We'll explain that more later. So we've got all the sensors uh, set up, computers on. You want to tap the sensors five times. And then you go around the tree tapping each one of the sensors five times and it's going to give you these numbers here. You want them uh, under 10. So each time you hit them, one, two, three, four, five. If you're by a road, you're going to want to hit them um, 
you know, more every 10 times. And like in here, we have that 100. We've got to hit that until the 100 goes away. Good, and it goes away. So we brought this inside to finish up the video. It was like way too cold outside, and uh, my fingers weren't working. So the video is now gonna finish. We're gonna finish it up in here, in my house. Um, so here's where we had entered all the information. There's our tree. These are where the location of each one of the centers. Blue line is roughly the shape of the tree. Uh, this is where all the sensors are located um, on the tree, circumference of the tree, and this is where each one of the positions are. Um, so we go across. These are all the different times. They've been filtered out based on uh, the species profile. And uh, there was when we were picking up the data. And here's our line graph. So this is the tree. These lines each represent uh, speeds. Uh, green, green lines are faster speeds. These purple ones are slower. These purple ones are, are hollow spots. So you can kind of see there's a, you know, obvious in that tree, there's a big hollow area there. This is the kind of area where we've got good live wood. And then there's wood here in the back. Um, so each one of these lines is, so when I tap, when I tap, jeez, dude. When I tap, oh, thanks. Again? No. So when you tap sensor one, you know, there's, uh, we get a yellow connection here. Um, sensor one has a good connection uh, through, uh, you know, back here to sensor six has a good connection to 22. Um, you know, the same like in here, nine has good connections back this way, but bad connections going this way because this way it's going through or trying to go around or can't go at all through this decay spot in the middle. So uh, that's where the times are. So this the machine takes these things together and it paints you a picture of the tree. So this is what the tree looks like on the inside. We've kind of got spotted decay moving out. Uh, looking at this tree, you're really gonna wanna monitor this area around one to see when this decay is spreading that way. And um, you know, what you also got to do and what we did is go in here with a resistance drill and you take this resistance drill and uh, you drill in to make sure that the data that you're getting is 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 correct so the resistance drill is going to show you know and we drilled it in this way and we found this decay pocket and we found uh, this second decay pocket and this little wood in there so we knew that this was legit and I drilled uh, back in here and we knew that this was legit. Uh, maybe it was out here when you were in eight. So we knew that there was this amount of good wood in here. So we just checked those two spots just to make sure that this image does look uh, look like uh, what we're seeing out in the real world. And if you don't do that resistance drilling, you're not you're not um, getting good imaging because you can you can do this imaging and it can it can come out wrong based on how deep you put the nails, maybe there's a rock in the tree, if there's a lot of, uh, you know, if it's raining or something, you can get all kinds of funky uh, readings back, and, and so you really need to back them up with a drill. So I, I did that, and we confirmed that this is what the inside of that tree looks like. The computer then takes um, that image, and it pushes load against it, and it's telling you that this tree is, uh, has lost 24% of its strength when you have loads coming that way. All right, so going through that, that big decay pocket. And so that's what, it's, that's what it's telling you. So, you know, you can't really make a recommendation or tell a client like, oh yeah, your tree's 24% strength loss and that, you know, you could tell them that that's good or bad, or you could use this imaging to say how deep the decay is to let them know, you know, how they need to monitor it, or maybe just knowing that 24% strength loss is enough for you to say that the tree needs to be removed. Um, and for me, that's not uh, what I do. I like to, I use this computer program. This is ArborStap. Uh, we load the image, Centennial Park. So what this does is this takes a picture of our tree and you outline the canopy of it and you load in your image and it tells you that 
you're getting, you know, there's that minus 24%. You've got a tree that's at 76%. So a tree at 100% is a relatively safe tree. That's a tree without a defect that you'd feel comfortable parking your car under, right? So we can't come with specific terms. So what this program does is it tells you if your tree that you're looking at with this defect is as safe or not as safe as a as a tree that, that doesn't have a defect and you would assume is, is safe. And I can go through the math on this but it would take a um, I'd have to show you or I'd have to write it out and I'm, I'm not going to do that now uh, I wasn't prepared to do it now <laughs> but so you enter in uh, that information and then what this thing is doing is and how a tree that can be de defective can be stronger than a tree that is not defective is based on its canopy size once it reaches its height in maturity and because trees have to grow every year in girth once they reach their height reach their height in maturity and they're growing in girth they have to every year but they're not growing in height and their canopy isn't getting bigger then those trees can be safer and safer because the base of them is getting bigger and bigger in, in layman's terms there's other ways to describe it but I Again, I don't want to go through everything. But so then this tree, put in the information, the height of the tree is about 16 meters. Everything in here needs to be done in meters. Diameter is about 123 centimeters. Um, this tree, if it had changed in height, like maybe you had a tree that was topped, you know, you would say the original height was taller and then the height it was now. That is where you would click this stuff in and that will really improve the safety of a tree, not advocating topping, but the long-term crown reduction. Uh, it does help. It's a process, a natural process called retrenchment. Um, could be an unnatural process, you know, called reduction pruning. But so this tree, we looked at how old the park was, 85 years old. This tree was put in when the park was put in, so it's 85 years old. In talking with uh, people that work in the park and looking at the tree and seeing how tall it was and me knowing how big that pin oaks get in our area, this tree had been mature in that size for, you know, at least the last 20 years. And so we've got a growth rate on how fast these trees grow. And then we're at a suburban area and location of the, of the tree. So once, uh, then we're gonna come in and you click this maturity correction, that's saying that this height, that this, the tree has not grown in height in 20 years, but it's still been growing in girth. You hit that maturity correction and it's telling you right now that you have a, a tree that is 101% uh, at 100%, you're at a relatively safe tree. Those, so this tree is right over that, that, um, that threshold. So you can assume that this tree is relatively uh, safe and based on you know the fact that I looked at the rest of the tree it didn't have any you know defects in the canopy this is not a you know um, you know this is a park setting but it's not somewhere where there's constant use around the tree so I would feel very comfortable and I am comfortable telling this uh, the city that we looked at this tree for telling them that hey this tree is uh, is good enough to stay the way it is. You don't have to prune it. You don't have to remove, you know, definitely don't have to remove it. It's, it's good where it is. And, uh, you know, because they've had pressure with people telling them to remove this tree. And so hopefully giving them this information makes it so that, you know, they, they don't have to do that. They don't have to spend the money on doing that. And they can spend the money elsewhere, like uh, planting trees and doing other stuff. So... That's how that all works. Uh, I hope this information was helpful for you. This is probably this is probably hopefully the best video on this that I've seen online. I've looked around for them. Even friend Frank has some out there, and and I hope this is like, but I hope this is a good concise one. It makes sense of how the sonic tomography is working. All right.